So today I'm going to read uh, from uh, a book of horrors edited by Stephen Jones, came out a few years ago. A story by Richard Christian Matheson to kind of demonstrate how the line between crime fiction, like hardcore real crime fiction, the kind you saw there in the early days at all due respect, stories by people like Mike Toomey and Scott Rutherford and uh, Nigel Bird. Um, the this is why I write both crime fiction and horror because I I don't think that there's very much difference between the two genres, and uh, this story here really exemplifies what I'm talking about. It's called Last Words, by Richard Christian Matheson. I savor a good moment of death the stumbling exhalations of consciousness as the sufferer lingers and searches for final words, the poignant exit, classic stuff. Demise can come with eyes tightly shut, far less interesting than with them open, spiritually scanning the cosmic path that awaits. Even in filmmaking, a final stare upon passing is always more evocative than lids fluttering, which produces a lazy, maudlin finish. With eyes open, available light affixes to the unblinking stare and, though the effect is slightly unnerving, allows it to glow with heartfelt drama that approaches the lyrical. All deaths are different. The end can come via terror or nobility. Mostly it's a trivial detour into eternity, which is how most bid dull adieu. Still, however, it comes. Everyone is entitled to their final moment, a fitting segue to consider details. A simple stabbing, by way of example, doesn't allow much time for reflection, especially if the blade interferes with airways. Too much blood loss. Always worse if awkwardly located for removal by its victims. In a similar way, final words are more manageable when the damage doesn't directly affect cardiac functions, vocalization, or mental activity. Mortal injuries ranging from blunt trauma to partial evisceration can also aid in composing final thoughts. Blood loss is minimal enough to provide focus. Poison, owing to its often delayed effect, is also nicely collaborative, its slower impact inviting moments of review. In some cases, it may also trigger eventual seizure in the expiring party, a convulsive response that can produce suffocation, adding unexpected gravitas to final words. In especially theatrical examples, the mouth will froth, which provides visual flourish, a value nearly cinematic. But crucially, whether by disease, mishap, or tragedy, when the time comes, there is no turning back, and any negotiation with the heavens is ill-spent energy. Last-second desperation that consumes valuable time is no ally. Far more useful, as the pulse wanes, to think of final words. On that subject, some examples are shared here, drawn from quotes gathered over years of encounters with those who are short on time. Example one. Oh God, mother, don't let this happen to me. Please help me. I will always love you. Spontaneous and appreciative, although there is a hint of the well-worn. Of course, everyone isn't Shakespeare. When he died, maybe he wasn't either. Another example. It hurts. It hurts. I can't believe how bad it hurts. A triumph of the succinct, almost musical. According to notes, that was a gunshot to both knees and three in the heart. Postscript, the disease didn't last long after that. Blood out all over the forest floor. They never found her. They rarely do. The next one is memorable. In the next world, I will never see such cruelty. Stirring in its own way, like tormented Irish poetry, it could go well with tea. Minimal emotional indulgence, always notable. According to notes, he was duct-taped 
and a drill had been used on his skull. This one from 2004 is a favorite. What did I do wrong? Was there ever a more existential lament worthy of Camus? According to notes, acid was poured into his eyes and wrecked him. Philosophy flowed as he tried to flee. Let us take a moment to remind ourselves that most don't think about the final thing they'll say. Certainly, few know how they'll die. But as in all movie death scenes, the telling close-up will come. And with any luck, someone may be near to witness the final utterance. No matter how they depart this deceiving world, most wish to be remembered. It's therefore vital they consider their last words. At the stroke of midnight, it's too late to assemble a worthy farewell, and despite any torment they suffer, no matter how afraid, no matter how rapidly their blood empties, they must improvise. Pain is momentary. They have to get past those things. Take my word for it. To be avoided is the clumsy nonchalance some actors affect on the Oscars. Fumbling with notes scribbled on napkins or Far worse, sputtering and hoping the heavens will rain eloquence. But the heavens don't. They never did and never will. They are a fiction. Each person must provide their own finale. All books have an important final line. All movies have one. So should a life. I do love movies. A last piece of advice. Know thyself. For example... I take lives because I enjoy hearing people suffer. I relish the begging and the sound of helpless shock. Sometimes I wish I could make them myself. The best one I ever heard was, You will suffer forever for what you've done. She was a young mother, very pretty and genuine. I won't go into the things I did to her with pliers and bleach. But I will say some people just don't want to die, and for the entire weekend, she wouldn't stop pleading or screaming. It was heaven. However, to set the record straight, she was mistaken. As it turns out, to the surprise and dismay of many, I do enjoy my life and look forward to every day, notwithstanding what some figured would happen. Losing my voice when I was two was a bad break. That's all. Despite that animal cutting out my larynx when I couldn't stop crying, I never sought pity. I wanted to speak like others, but had to get over it. I never looked for sympathy and never from my mother, who was dead inside and let him fucking do it until my soft throat was so sawed open my head slumped to one side and I couldn't call out for help even though I tried and they just left me to fucking die. The last words I remember ever saying were, you hurt me, Dada. Pathetic. The day I burned their house down and stood on the sidewalk listening to them beg and die, my life began again. Someone save us. We're burning to death. Predictable. Selfish, blameless, so fucking them. It was my first saved quote. Sometimes, when what's left of my throat spasms and I can't easily breathe or sleep, I watch the video recordings of the people I've killed. It's like going to the movies, tense, filled with twists. The last words are always the highlight. <laughs>